But I also want to mention something that everyone listening knows about. Inflation. It is out of control. The stock market is on a roller coaster ride and interest rates are set to reach record highs. Your retirement funds and even your bank accounts are more at risk now than ever, you can tell. And in order to protect your hard-earned savings, you've got to call American Hartford Gold. They can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts against inflation by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you look at the trends for gold, it almost always appreciates in value no matter how far back you go. Just make a phone call, it'll be short, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. It's very easy. American Hartford Gold is the highest rated firm in the United States with an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. This means that they're trustworthy. And if you call them now with this promotion, they will give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So give them a call, 866-488-3814. That's 866-488-3814. Or you can just text them. You can text REBEL to 65532. Again, a short phone call. It'll save your life, 866-488-3814. You won't regret it. Neither will your savings account or your retirement fund. Welcome back to another glorious episode of Andrew Says. I don't know why I said that. Joining me today is Amala Ekpenobi, PragerU, and her own show, of course, brand new. We're going to let her talk about that in a bit. And Lewis Brackpool, of course, Rebel News UK reporter. Thank you both for being here. How are you guys? Doing well. Very How well. are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, guys. Amala, you made it into your office. Um, oh so God. early for you. I'm so sorry. In the future, just <laughs> say... All good. 10 p.m. Andrew that's when we can do it instead <laughs> you just started it gets me out of bed at least yeah that's true not me I'm not uh I'm not waking up for seven for anything um <laughs> you just started a new show unapologetic yeah. you can see the fancy background you want to go to her full screen there it's pretty spectacular I'm pretty impressed tell us tell everybody why you started this show what inspired it um I think I told you first to start a show I'm going to take credit for it but why did you <laughs> feel that you wanted to do your own show yeah, well, first and foremost, it was all Andrew's idea. Thank but you. Secondly, <laughs> <laughs> I I used to be a former leftist, and I think about that time and reflect on it a lot. And I think a lot about how I was influenced and who broke through to me to make me realize that maybe I'm on the wrong side of history here. And a lot of it had to do with compassionate conservatives who were willing to go through the issues and talk about their perspective, talk about the progressive perspective, and really state their understanding as to why somebody might be progressive on these issues, but work their way over to that conservative side and sort of explain why it's a little bit more logical and maybe a little bit more fulfilling to be on that end of things. And I thought I could do that. And certainly, I think looking at the younger generation right now, both in the US and Canada and worldwide, uh, we need younger people talking about these things because that's who's truly getting captured by the progressive left in all of this. Something I've noticed, especially with yourself, Will Witt, people like John Doyle, and something I've been trying to do is not self-censor myself. And I feel like a lot of people, let's say, in our uh, sphere of po politics have been trying to do their best to be completely honest, unapologetic, you might even say, and just, you know, really <laughs> – sorry about that – and really just put the, the point across and not have to self-censor ourselves. Is that something you're going for? Because I know you're getting a lot of backlash – from maybe the right places, but we'll get into that in a bit. But is that something you're trying to tell yourself with your show is to not, you know, cut any corners or self-censor yourself? Oh, absolutely. I think honesty is truly the best policy in standing by your values. Of course, if somebody brings an argument or some evidence that proves me wrong, I also don't want to self-censor in that way. I want to admit, hey, I don't know what we're talking about right now, or I'm not as well versed in this topic yet. Let me do some research. Or, you know, I was wrong about something that I said prior. And people are not doing that anymore. It's become abundantly clear that everybody is just comfortable coming at all of these topics as confidently as possible and acting like they're an expert on any given topic on any given day. And I don't want to be that type of person. I really just want to be honest with myself, honest with the people who are watching. And I think honest conversations like that and true dialogue is going to be what breaks through much of the polarity and, and divisiveness that we're experiencing right now. Lewis, as a notoriously polite person, do you think it's time to finally, you know, start to not pull any punches, not in, let's not say we're not Donald Trump where we just want to call 
I would never say he's short and fat. I would never say something like that. As Trump said about mm. Kim Jong Un. But is it time to start being? I I don't want to say unapologetic again. Is it time? <laughs> is it time to start? You know, stop with the self censoring. Say exactly what you mean. And if people have a problem with it, then they can watch something else or they can bring up an argument that actually refutes what you're saying. I think Amala touched on um, something that's extremely important, and what that is is how you need to you need to be able to say your on give your honesty but on top of that if you do get something wrong you own it and you reflect on it and then you grow from it this is how you progress um so yeah i, I think you should be unapologetic about what you say and i think that you should spearhead your conversation in a way that's going to enlighten people but if you shouldn't be scared however um to get things wrong I mean, I think that's what um, discredits a lot of people. I've seen a lot of commentators online, especially um, a lot younger uh, commentators who decide to go on this venture and all of a sudden, if they, they're proved wrong, they have some kind of almost meltdown about it and they can't own up to their own discrepancy. So, yeah, I think Amala hit the nail on the head when when she said you know, it's okay to be wrong almost. And, you know, it's okay to sort of own that. And I think that's what separates people nowadays from, uh, say, a good reporter or a good journalist or a good commentator from the others. You two in particular, I think, get a lot of backlash from whichever woke leftist crowd you want to call it. Lewis, I, I want to get to you in a second because I think yours has to do with you being one of the spearheading voices in your country, and there's not a lot of other people who are brave enough to say the stuff you're saying. But Amala, there was something that you posted, I think, on TikTok. You want to tell people what that was, first and foremost? Sure. So I'll, I'll make a long story very short. I found a very prominent TikToker on the platform by the name of Dylan Mulvaney, who's happened to become very famous, 2.4 million followers, all by making day in the life content about being a trans woman. Is that the guy from his car who says day whatever is a woman? Yeah, so okay. day 40 of being a girl, these things like that. And even goes as far as to say, you know, I'm not going to identify as a woman because a woman is a strong term and implies maturity. I identify as a girl. So I found this TikToker. I saw how many views and how many likes that they were getting, looking through the comments of just these really mostly young women uh supporting this and saying this is such a great ideology to uphold and it, children know who they are, you know, the, the typical leftist talking points. And I thought, okay, somebody should make a video about this. So I went through it and uh, was reacting to the TikToks on my podcast, even saw one where Tampax, you, we all know what that company is used for, has offered Dylan a sponsorship. Oh my which God. Is no way. No <laughs> um, way. That's unbelievable. Mental. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? So that's what I was thinking. I thought this is crazy. So I took a very respectful approach, even decided to use Dylan's proper, you know, use the pronouns that Dylan chose in my podcast to just talk to leftists and have this compassionate plea for why this is not uh, the best route in leading your life. And it's certainly not something that we should be teaching to children uh, as, as something that's normal or going to garner you success in your life. And of course, Dylan caught on to this podcast says that he did not watch it but i would imagine he did and made a whole video about it. and this video has millions of views now and the left just immediately pounced on me i was getting death threats i was getting told how mm -hmm. much of a transphobe i was that i should kill myself and mm -hmm. I, you know, just the typical cycle of a conservative being called out and then the leftists jump on them and, and call them all the phobics in the ist so that's where we're at right now with that. <laughs> Tampax for shame. Why do you think they why do you think they respond this way though? Whomever the people may align with or where they fall. Why is why do you think the response is instead of trying to prove you wrong or thinking about it or anything, why is the response uh die amala die? Cuz whenever I I see Brian Stelter say something stupid that I disagree with, I don't go and message him and email him. What do you think is the actual motivation behind that? 
Well, when I was a leftist, I found that it is very hard to make logical arguments for the things that you're saying. So when somebody comes to the table with a logical, reasonable, reasonable argument for why they believe what they believe and you have nothing to counter that, it does make you angry. It makes you extremely defensive. And that defensiveness just comes out because you don't want to give up that ideology, something that you've subscribed to maybe your whole life or for the past few years and something that you believe to be true. And suddenly you're hearing somebody who is a biological woman telling you, no, wait a minute, you don't just get to claim womanhood. And when you don't have an argument to actually fight back, it makes you very angry. So I completely understand why people respond the way that they do. Maybe they should reevaluate um, <laughs> because it's not such a fun experience to go through, but I totally get it. Lewis, where do you think the line is between caring about these responses and not caring? And you know me, even my own fans make fun of me. So I'm not big into caring about the tweets and everything. But at some point, mm. if people are telling you to go die, like it, it's going to mount up and be like, why are these people doing this? Where do you think the line is between taking criticism from from strangers and just, you know, pushing it off to the side and saying it doesn't matter? Where do you think that comes into play? Uh, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, as you know, I think I get a lot of uh, hate for talking about um, various different subjects, similar to Amala's as well, um, with the, the the trans debate, of course, illegal immigration, the COVID stuff. Um, so there is a there is a fine line. I think what you have to remember is social media is basically just noise. It's like background noise. The best way is if you are getting a lot of hate you turn it off <laughs> and you just you just take a break. That's absolutely fine. I think it's important for people to not try and let these sort of comments shower over you and affect you. I know it's easier said than done. Um, there are many prominent um, commentators that have received so much of this horrible um, dialogue from, from random people online coincidentally hiding behind anonymous accounts um which you know it, it says a bit it says a lot about people who um who decide to um <laughs> hurl abuse from you know someone with a, a cat as like a, a profile picture you know but um listen i i try to you know just think it's water off the duck's back you know you just you have to try and just get on with it and in a way i take it in a strange stride because like Amala said, these these people can't formulate arguments that well. So their only <laughs> way of trying to argue with someone is to try and attack them so they feel uncomfortable. They're trying to get you to feel uncomfortable in your own skin. So for them to message you these horrible, horrible things, if you admit defeat and if you, if you start to feel uh, almost um, just to cave into this defeat you will lose. So you have to maintain posture. You have to maintain your confidence and you have to just keep going. Just don't stop. Just keep speaking your truths. And if you are wrong, you can correct that and don't be afraid of it. I know, like I said, it's easier said than done, but if you keep practicing it, it will become a lot clearer in the future. Wow, Sesame Street needs to hire us. I think after a segment like that, is there <laughs> so a British? Beautiful. Is there a British Sesame Street, Lewis? Uh, <laughs> please don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> so there is. I just want to know, like Elmo is. Br there's a British Elmo. Here British we go. Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, Hello, Lewis. probably. <laughs> Now there it is. I was waiting oh, for it. No. I was waiting every single time. I think what you what you probably find, Amala, is that you know Andrew likes to bully me a lot because of the <laughs> accent, which is fine. Uh, so I just take it that he probably fancies me. So you know I'm just going to take that. So that's fine. I'm going to have to email the Rebel News HR department because this is unacceptable. Wow, it is Amala, unacceptable. Remember who gave you the idea for your show? Okay. <laughs> like, has anybody has anybody reached out to you to debate? like trans ideology or anything yet, Amala? No, it's very difficult. I even went as far as to create a whole segment on my show called Devil's Advocate where I bring mm -hmm, I on that. prominent conservatives and I debate them as a leftist because I know the talking points. Because every time I reach out to somebody, it's either no response or no, we're not interested. And I've even uh, on the show said... Dylan, if you want to come on this trans TikToker, I would love to have you on. It'll be a respectful conversation. I will be kind mm. and and caring in the way that we approach these topics, but I would love to have you on to talk about it. We will be waiting for that response and we'll see when that comes in. 
I've even had responses from sports writers say, you got, no, I'm not debating such a hateful, <laughs> so for people on a hateful, I'm like, you are, anyways, um, we are now knee deep in Twitter, I don't know, 2.0, we can call it, the whole new mm -hmm. Twitterers, people's accounts that are banned are just popping up out of nowhere, and it's really weird to me seeing the people in mainstream media and other places basically reject free speech as it is written in the U.S. Constitution. Elon Musk saying that he basically wants it to follow the law, and people have a problem with that. I think um, the lady on The View said it was a white supremacist uh, point of view to have this. Um, I know on CNN they said it was a party that, if there's no rules at a party, is it somewhere where you want to go to? Like, <laughs> yeah. what party, what house party has rules, like, other than don't destroy <laughs> the place? You got to be out of here by 7.30 p.m. Where do you think Elon takes this, do you guys? Do you think we go to a place where it's, you know, you can say racist things, you can say hateful things as long as you're not breaking the law and that's going to be completely allowed? It seems to be that way right now. Or do you think that it slowly gets walked back? I'll start with you, Lewis. Well, in the UK, we have a lot of different uh, laws. I think we're basically living in a dystopian novel, novel over here. So... Um, we have a new thing that's being pushed through legislation called the Online Safety Bill. And yes, it is as as horrible as it sounds, where they basically want to um, eradicate um, any kind of um, discourse, whether it be grotesque discourse all the way through to just questioning um, efficacy of the old Vs. And, you know, I don't want to get you, you know, censor or anything like that, Andrew. So I'm being polite um, by not Vs? saying it vaccines oh. sorry mm. um yeah so gotcha. <laughs> yeah I'll, oh you were thinking something else obviously clearly <laughs> there we go i finally See, embarrassed well, you am i once. the bad guy here you are but um yeah the online safety bill anyways um yeah they're, they're trying to push through this new legislation it's it's um it's it's quite scary basically so with this new um uh, this new Twitter 2.0, if this safety bill goes through, I mean, it it doesn't really matter what, where we stand over in the UK. Uh, look, we don't like horrible, distasteful um, discourse, but being someone who is passionate about free speech and advocates for it, it's like, do you know what it's like? It's like saying, do you know what? I love food, but we should ban all junk food and you shouldn't. For, for your health, you shouldn't be having any type of junk food because I dislike it and I think it's bad for you. And that's basically what the, the crux of it is. And it's worrying. So, yeah, I, I don't know. For us in the UK, it's a bit topsy-turvy. We had non-hate crime incidents for two years where um, hun hundreds of thousands of people had police knock on their doors because they might have posted something a bit spicy on Facebook or Twitter. So... You know, the law is pretty strange over here and it's continuing to possibly get worse. So I'm kind of envious. I think the the First Amendment over in America is possibly the most beautifully crafted piece of legislation I've ever seen. So I'm pretty jealous. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to concede and say that I'm pretty jealous um, of that. <laughs> as you should so, be. <laughs> as I should be, indeed. But um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But it's, I think it's a good starting point. And I think it's woken a lot of people up um, to realize that we should be having um, open discourse, no matter how much you disagree with it. Omala, why do you think people are so afraid to have the ability for anyone to say whatever they want? You can go outside in America and walk outside and scream something into the void and it's not illegal. But why is it such a problem mm -hmm. when it's online? Is it because it's targeted at people or because it could be, you know, be seen as bullying? Why do you think they have this point of view? Well, we're in this new worldview now that life is supposed to be cushy and completely devoid of offense and nobody should ever say anything that hurts you in any way or makes you feel uncomfortable. And we've really coddled Americans in a lot of ways and made this culture where young people especially are so sensitive to this sort of thing and they are so invested in PC culture. So I think that's a problem uh, for the average person who's really fighting back against somebody like Elon Musk owning Twitter. As far as the elites are concerned <clears throat> and people like Brian Stelter, they're really concerned with people having freedom of speech. I think they know the stronghold that Twitter has specifically on the American mind, on what we see 
see and what we're aware of on the narrative that we subject ourselves to. And they are not comfortable with now conservatives and even classic liberals being able to enter that space in a way that is dissident from what they've always been saying. During COVID for the past two years, Twitter was just an arbiter for the COVID narrative and constantly posting about it, made their own COVID tab for all the news and all the CDC updates and regulations. Mm -hmm. And now they're facing a future where that might not be the case. And if you can get one kernel of truth amongst all the lies, people are going to find that. I think mm. something that would satisfy the media is if they started making announcements of Alex Jones is coming back in 10 days, Donald Trump is coming <laughs> back in 30 days, whomever else. Do you guys think that Trump's going to come back, by the way? Or I mean, I true, think he will. True social isn't doing that will. good, I don't think. I, I don't know how many <laughs> how many people it has. It's not on Android or desktop yet. I don't have an iPhone, so... Up here in Canada, we don't have iPhone. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I don't, I don't have it yet. Do you guys think he's going to come back on, Lewis? You said yes. I, I believe he will. I think he just can't stay away. Personally, I think he, he, he misses Twitter. Come on, like he misses going on Twitter and and doing his thing. So I think he will cave um, slowly but surely. Uh, yeah, that's that's my view on it because I, I believe that. Yeah, he just he, he he loves it. He loves it so much, and he misses it. We know he misses it. So yeah, he's going to come back eventually. 100%. Isn't this? Wouldn't this be financially or business wise, business fundamentally? He doesn't need to worry. He doesn't uh, need to worry. It would be he admitting that your own platform isn't as important as the other one. Well, he did make Truth Social as a response to this whole Twitter thing, at least in exactly. part. So I think admitting that is admitting that once Twitter is back and you're able to be on it, maybe you let the whole Truth Social thing go and you you get back on it. We, <laughs> he was in his presidency putting out tweets at like three in the morning and we think he doesn't want to be on Twitter anymore. I think exactly. he's going to join and, and he might he might hold out for a little bit, but he'll be back. Now he's putting out yeah. truths at three in the morning. No, oh, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Po doesn't it say po I think it says post your truth, which I would fundamentally disagree with, but I guess it's just your opinion. I don't know. From one president right. to another, I also have written down uh, Biden. It's being reported that he might cancel all debt. Now, I mean, I read this student debt. That is, I read this and I hear what can I do desperately to save myself from getting completely ruined in the uh, the midterms and to bump my approval rating down from the low or from the low thirties up to the mid to high thirties, maybe. Amala, tell me it isn't true. Tell me, well, maybe you agree with it. I don't know how you feel about this. Tell me how you feel about the possibility of yeah. tomorrow we wake <laughs> up and there's no, shut up, Lewis. There's no student debt. <laughs> there's no student debt. And all of a sudden, the people who work during college, I think it would be unfair to them. How do you feel about this? Oh, I for one, I don't think it's going to happen. This is just sort of this lie that we roll out every single f four years to make people who are in college feel better and, and go and cast their votes. So I don't think it's going to happen. We're talking about trillions of dollars here. And I think about 45 million Americans who still have student loan debt in this country. Not happening. Who's going to pay for that? What about the parents that worked really hard to put their kids through school and pay for it? What about the people who have already paid off their loans? What about future Americans that have to take out student loans? Loan debt. There's just so many insurmountable questions when it comes to canceling something like this. And it's something that they're constantly running on. If this happens with Biden, I I will be shocked to say the least. But you have to wonder how canceling out that big, massive pile of debt is going to affect the average American. And it's just simply not fair. Now, should we have a discussion about how expensive higher education is? Certainly, because you have people going to school paying $50,000 a, a year to get a general under studies degree, which is virtually useless. So that's a discussion wow. we should be having, but we should not be talking canceling debt right now, especially with the rates of inflation we're experiencing. I think it's three trillion something. I don't know if Olivia, you can quickly look that up, but I think to add three trillion dollars of debt onto the national debt immediately, it, it's going to have terrible consequences. All of a sudden, you're it, it's like printing three trillion dollars because all of a sudden people don't have to put that back in the system. So all of a sudden you're imagine you have a bank account and you're the government and all of a sudden you've put a, a red three point four trillion on that. That's going to have real negative consequences. And I don't think the right. people who have student debt actually think about that. They really want it to be, you know, all about their own struggle. 
How much? Yeah, it's 1.6. So I was off 1. by about 50 percent. But that's still a ton of money. And I think with inflation already at what it is, it would be an insane thing to drop on the government. But then, Lewis, and I want you to ask this question. What about this side of the argument? And I'm going to steal them all as devil advocates uh, segment here. <laughs> Devil's advocate. Um the U.S. government has enough money anyways. You know, they spend it frivolously no matter what. Why can't they just pay for school? Why can't they just... If they're going to spend money on nonsense all the time, whether it's, you know, the next level of fighter jet or like somebody's campaign, something like that, why can't they just spend a couple trillion dollars to make school free? Because it just devalues everything. And on top of this, um, if you think about it, right, I remember we had a similar thing uh, here in the UK. Okay, it was oh gosh, I think I was I think I was about sixteen. I was a communist in school <laughs> studying politics. Oh, no. um, yeah, I was. Yeah, you wearing a beret not, by any awful. chance? Yeah, all of that um, with dyed hair and fingerless gloves. When, a lot. We need photos. Great. Do we have photos no. of this? Oh, we do. No, we do. I've, uh, I've wiped <gasps> them clean. No, um, your mother that, has photos probably somewhere right. um but i went to my first protest and it was the cancellation of um uh, well it was completely scrapping the student tu uh, tuition fees um student loans and it's funny that because when you bring when you take a loan out of a bank you're expected to pay it back and that's kind of just how it works so suddenly for students it's oh i regret doing my gender studies uh <laughs> assignment back in 2000 and whatever and uh and yeah i regret doing that so i think that i shouldn't have to pay that back now and can we just wipe that clean i'm sorry that's just not how the real world works and the fact that this well the biden administration has come out and said yeah um we're going to propose to uh to of course scrap this is absolutely dreadful i mean you can't just like you said you can't just keep adding debt <laughs> to what you already have that's literally it's going to devalue it's going to it's good it's just going to be a total mess remember cost of living is up as it is everywhere in the west as well um inflation is high everywhere i mean over here our um our cost our, not a our cost of living but um our standards of living has uh reached a, a pinnacle low so you know I, I can only assume that it's the it's happening over in america as well so yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't buy the argument that it's just, you know, it's for a greater good or a better cause. It just doesn't make sense in, in my view. Yeah, ca cancel uh, car loan debt first. Yeah, let's exactly. do that. And insurance. Why not? Lewis, cars are things we drive on the roads here in North America. Oh, now. sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to driving wagons, mate, over here. So, you know. <laughs> Amal, are you going to say something on that? Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. Imagine this being a discussion we're having surrounding any other form of debt. Imagine saying, well, if you bought that house, you couldn't afford it. If you signed up for that loan for that car that, yeah. you know, you don't want anymore or that you regret buying, we're going to go ahead and cancel that for you. It sets a very, very uneasy precedent, and we should not be mm. having these discussions. Oh, well, back in uh, independent YouTube days of Andrew, I did some some interviews regarding should school be free. And I interviewed a, a couple of people from Egypt where they said university was free and or covered by the government, I should say. And they said it completely devalued uh, the degrees and the diplomas you got because you get something that's, you know, a hot course or something like here it would have been like nursing or dental mm. assistant or something like that. And all of a sudden. 300,000 people go out and get a degree and it doesn't mean anything before and you still don't get a job. So when you people are, it, it sounded like when people are just being handed the opportunity to get a free education and there's not this intrinsic risk of should I spend money on this or do I have to work hard to get it or do I have to go into debt, it completely devalues it. And having said that, when you do that for young people who are 18 and 19, myself included, most people, I think, don't go into the field for which they first apply to college or university. My first thing was radio broadcasting. Now, I'm so, sort of in broadcasting now, but I didn't go to a, a radio station in Saskatoon like I was supposed to do. So a lot of people mm. switch their major, I guess you would call it, or their program, and then the government pays for that. So now all of a sudden we're paying for $30,000 the first year and then four more years or something else at $50,000 a year, however much it is. 
And if anybody can just do that for, for, for free at taxpayers' expenses whilst probably not paying taxes from having a job, because why would you? The, the school's paid for. Now we're getting to what? At least $100,000 per person once they hit the age of 18. That's even more debt that we can't handle. And we've seen, and to my own counterpoint point argument of America's got so much money anyways, <laughs> once you start piling this on and on, there's not going to be any money. We're already seeing it here in Canada. The, they're trying to get us to spend more money. An article came out the other day and said, well, people have so much money that's all being printed, they don't know what to do with it. It's because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not worth anything. So right. if you keep piling on this debt, the only way is it for it to, the only thing for it to do is to implode and you've got to have some sort of revolution like they might have in uh, Venezuela, which they're not, and, uh, Who's the country doing Bitcoin now um, with all the gangs? We know which one that is, of course, off the top of our heads. Uh, and, and then Turkey had this happen, too. <laughs> El Salvador, Lewis and Amala. Come on, you guys got to help me uh, out here. Thank We're... you. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm on the same page. Yeah, I was like, yeah, on a totally there. <laughs> totally there, yeah. guys. Thank you. Uh, I want to move behind the paywall for another segment or six. You guys can go to rebelnewsplus.com for just $8 a month. I cost less than Netflix, of course, Ezra, Sheila, <laughs> all the other shows don't laugh, Lewis. It's true. And everybody. <laughs> uh, you know what, you guys? This is my show, okay? You sit in the background, <laughs> you sit on your sides. And you shut No, I can't be that mean to them all. Only Lewis. Uh, back to <laughs> me, me, please. Rebelnewsplus.com. is $8 a month. Even cheaper. You get two months off if you subscribe for an entire year. You get Ezra's show, Sheila's show, my show, the Misunderstood show. And thank you for watching. Go beyond the paywall for exclusive segments. See you guys there.